Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today again. We are in Series 9 of our Creating Your Own Success YouTube series. And, of course, we have our guru, our success guru with us today, Anne-Marie Sabbath. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hi, Carol Ann. Thanks for having me. We're so excited to continue our series. And maybe, maybe we can just remind the folks that this is Series 9 from Anne-Marie's book, um, What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. And we're only doing up to series 10. So we want you to make sure that you go back and watch all of the series very carefully. And they follow chapter by chapter with Anne Marie's book. And um, as I said, today we're talking uh, about habit 15 in her book, which is series nine. And I will have all the links, of course, as I always do, running across the screen as well as in the description below. And don't forget, we already had a winner of Anne Marie's book, What Self Made Millionaires Do. She was so excited to receive it. Don't forget to leave your comment below. Anne Marie will give you a book in any format that you want, whether it's audio, paperback, PDF. Right, Anne Marie? You bet. Okay, great. So, Anne Marie, what we're going to talk about today, and I really love these concepts. We have like three kinds of people we have a want to make it happen person a wish it could happen person and a make it happen person and you go into that really nicely in your book can you explain to us what type of people these are and why it's important to understand this to create your own success you be it thank you carolyn there are three types of people and we all have all three types in us Mm -hmm. One is a want to make it happen. The second is a wish it could happen. And the third is make it happen. Mm -hmm. So beginning with the want to make it happen, we all want to make something happen. However, what happens is want to make it happen people often forget to surround themselves with people who have made it happen. And when want to make it happen people surround themselves with doubters who believe that the idea that's being proposed is ridiculous, those want to make it happen, stop right there. It never, ever happens. They think they need more money when they realize, they may realize that they only need sweat equity and perseverance. This is what it's about. For instance, if you want to start a business, the first way to do it is to Surround yourself with other small business owners. Read books on what it takes to begin a small business. Go online to podcasts. That is what a want to make it happen person does. Now, a wish it could happen person does this. A wish it make it happen person projects 40 years from the time he or she is wishing it and asks himself or herself, if you were 92, what would you wish you would have done that you have not yet done? That's a big one. I can tell you there were many things that I wished I could do. And when I ask myself, if I were 92, what would I wish I would have done that I have not yet done? I made my list and I started focusing on those things and did end up doing it. The key is ask yourself if you were at a certain point. If you were on your deathbed, what would you wish you would have done that you haven't yet done? Is it spend more time with family? Is it save more? Is it go on more trips? What is it for creating your own success? Again, you have to work hard, however playing hard is essential. And then there is what self-made billionaires do, the make it happen person. You don't have to be the smartest game in town. You don't have to have the highest IQ. You do have to have, however, the highest EQ or emotional quotient. I'll tell you, I remember reading a book, and it is called How to Get Anything You Want. I was so naive, Carolyn, that I read the book from beginning to end when I should have read the last page and forgotten about it. And do you know what the answer is? The key to getting anything you want is doing whatever it takes to get it done. That is a make it happen person. So let me put these in 
three areas. A make it happen person figures out what he or she wants, devises a plan, writes it down, and then gives himself or herself a dead line. It's essential. So a goal is a dream with a deadline. Mm. The second we said already, surround yourself with people who have been there, done that. It's so important to have a support system because then your wish, what you want is more real when you know other people have done it. Mm -hmm. And the third is get ready to make it happen. It's so important. Read books on the topic. As I said before, read blogs, listen to podcasts, do whatever you need to do, and then get ready to do that. Drew Reese, who is one of the self-made millionaires who I've quoted in the book, and you'll read more about him, says this. Here's his quote. You've got to put everything aside, people doubting you, people saying that's not a good idea, and just grind through that. Push through that. By doing that, I can guarantee you, you can do it. You just have to want to be a make-it-happen person. So I think people need to remember, too, that this doesn't only re relate to, like, wealth. This is about your personal success, your your love life, like everything, right? It's just like a global parameter that folks can use for success, whatever that means to them, right, Anne-Marie? Exactly, and I'm gonna give you a real quick example without digressing. When we moved from New Jersey to New York, well, before we moved, I wanted to move back to New York so badly, and we looked for six months for a place that was uh, had the criteria looking for within the budget that we had. We had two weeks before signing our lease, I wished I could make it happen, and nothing was happening. So what I did to make it happen is I began packing my kitchen. And Alan, my partner, said, what are you doing? I said, I am acting as if it is happening. He said, what do you mean? I said, we are going to find that right place that we will both love within our budget within the next 10 days. And guess what? It has been one year and two weeks since we are where we want it to be. So a make it happen person visualizes, recognizes, does whatever it takes to make it happen and certainly acts as it goes through the process. And so I say that you don't have to be the smartest game in town. You have to do something called belief. I love that. That's so great. Thank you. Uh, what about the sky is the limit? Um, you, you talk about that in your book. And you, you have five ways to adopt a growth mindset to make the sky's limit. Could you yes. walk us through some of that? I will. Yes. And actually, God rest his soul, Dr. Wayne Dyer wrote a book, and it is called The Sky's the Limit. And if you haven't read his book, you must read it. It's outstanding. So there are several ways to adopt a growth mindset to make your sky, uh, to create the sky's the limit approach. First of all, plant Buy a plant. I don't care if it's a money tree, a little plant. And think of it as the thought that you want to develop. And each day you water it by giving yourself another idea, going online, listening to that podcast, reading that blog, water it with miracle Grow. Put it near light, just as you're going to surround yourself with people that you know will assist you in being imaginative. They will provide stimulation for you as a light will provide stimulation for the plant. And once again, feed your plant fertilizer. Do it with your mind. Read about what you want. Read about people who have already accomplished it. Now, when you get to the point where maybe you're outgrowing a certain uh, phase, maybe you need to hire someone instead of doing it all yourself. Think of it as replanting your pot into a bigger, your plant into a bigger pot. So consider that plant, your idea, and what you are doing to make it grow. And then finally, continue to have this growth mindset. The plant is the form of growth that you will have. And again, you have to nurture it every day, feed it every day. The sky is the limit. You cannot take your eye off the ball when you want something. You can give yourself a time out. You don't want to plant every day. However, you do need to make sure it's fine. And so with that said, recognize that you really can have anything you want when you put your mind toward it. The sky is the limit. 
So true. And all of these techniques from your book, Anne-Marie, these come from success stories of very wealthy and successful people. Um, I, I, I say that because I don't want people to think that we're just, you know, quoting things that really have no meaning to them. And these are proven habits of highly successful people. And I want folks to understand that that all of them put together and and using these tools every day in your life will allow you to be a successful person. Exactly. These are things you can't buy. These are things you have to do. Surround yourself with it. So it doesn't matter what you want. It can be more of a personal life, more of a professional life, a better job. That's how you have to manage this. And these, I did interview, as you said, 30 people came from nothing and they stayed focused. They did it. I'm not sure they had a plant and used that as their uh, thought for growing what they turned into a business. However, this is an analogy that will work with some people and other people will use a different item right. for, to be their thought. Wonderful. And you talk about reinventing yourself and I, I, love this because i think that all of us shed skin every few years and we're constantly evolving constantly reinventing ourselves but then you find some folks that are stuck right Anne marie so what can those folks kind of do and and why is reinventing yourself so important when you're finding success or searching for well success? every every year you should really evaluate what you have done and what you want to do to add to that or what you want to do, what adjustments you want to make. So oftentimes when I'm in a conversation with somebody, I may ask, especially if they're climbing that ladder mm -hmm. of success, I ask, what is it that you would like to do that you haven't yet done? What is your five-year plan? And the winners will say, I want to go back to finish my degree or I want to be able to work for an organization that will be a, a great for me to learn so that eventually I can start my business. So in order to do that, you need to reinvent yourself. Where are you now? What is it that you're doing? What is it that you want to be doing? Give yourself once again a deadline, a date, and then start doing that. So write down a five-year, a 10-year, a 15-year plan, and then ask yourself, what is it that I'm going to do to reinvent myself? It might be one new thing. It may be choosing friends who are not in the coasting environment. Maybe they are in the do it environment because oftentimes friends outgrow you or you yes. outgrow them. It's extremely important. And then give yourself credit for what you've done. When you reinvent yourself, tell yourself, you know, this is what I want to do. I can tell you quickly, my daughter, was uh, buying an outfit and the woman had been in finance and she, my daughter tried on two outfits and she said, so you said you're going to be applying for a new job. And she said, eventually she said, are you applying for administrative assistant? Or are you applying to be a CEO? She said, I'm applying to be a CFO. And she said, this one looks like administrative assistant. This one looks like you're a top person within the organization. So sometimes you have to reinvent yourself, even the way you dress your deportment, the way you focus on others rather than be the me, me, me person, be the you, you, you. This is what reinventing yourself is. It's not a matter of taking a time out. It's where am I? Where do I want to be? How am I going to get there? Who is my role model? And what? who can I help who wants to be where I am today? That's reinvention. And that's so important because it's not always uh, about you. It's about other people as well. More okay. importantly, right. yes, more importantly, you take them with you and help them to grow by empowering them. And, and how do people embrace change? Because with success and with, you know, personal evolution, a lot of change comes about. And you talk about um, embracing change and you discuss three ways to embrace change. I know a lot of folks that are resistant to change, so much so that they eat the same thing every day they walk the same way to the stores every day how can folks break the habits that maybe are not bringing them the success that they are looking for 
Well, the first thing to do is to read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> when you read Who Moved My Cheese, you will understand who you are and how you operate with change. That's a real important one. It's the best, and everybody should read that book at least once a year. It will change, no pun intended, your life. So first of all, when you do face a change in your life, personal or professional, the first question is, how will this change affect my life? What are the benefits of it? And you'll be surprised. There may be more benefits than negatives. The second is schedule time with people who are around you, who are comfortable reacting to change. Listen to them. Let them brainstorm with you. Ask them to listen to you. This will help clarify where you will be in the change process and how it will impact your life or may not change it at all. It may be only perception. And then the last thing is write down the last time you did have a change in your life and the benefits that you encountered short-term and long-term without realizing it. This will help you face change in the future. Again, change is very scary when you're not prepared for it, yes. when you do not have a sounding board a support system. So it's so essential that you have that. And the question that I would ask our viewers is, what change have they encountered lately and how well did they embrace it? Wonderful, wonderful. So do, do you have any advice for people that want to change but maybe have people in their lives around them that keep them from evolving and changing? Well, my recommendation is slowly and surely spend time with people who have allowed change in their lives. People operate in different time zones. People sometimes change immediately and then go back to the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Some people change slowly and accept it full time. And other people are still hemming and hawing. And that's why the book, Who Moved the Cheese? Who Moved My Cheese is essential to read, to see how you do it. And we do adapt to change differently based on circumstances, based on the times in our life. Mm -hmm. So the only thing you can count on in life is change. If you're not changing, you're not living, you're not breathing, you're not growing. And you can only be responsible for your change, right? Not other people's changes. Absolutely. The only person you can change is yourself. And so that is a real important takeaway. And people who are successful realize that is what they can do rather than attempting to change other people and then uh, getting frustrated because they cannot do it. You're so correct. So in closing... Um, anything else you want to add to these awesome habits? These are great, Anne-Marie. Well, thank you. And I certainly thank the 30 people who participated in the book, What self Men Billionaires Do That Most People Don't, which, by the way, reached its 10,000 mark in a 12 and a half month period. And I say that because people realize it's written in a down-to-earth conversational way. Mm -hmm. We're talking to them. And it has made a difference in people's lives. It's something as simple as I now surround myself with people I want to be mm -hmm. like. I now become a minimalist. I now pre-plan my purchases. It's the little things. It's not rocket science. If people take four of the 52 secrets with them, I can tell you it really does make a difference. Not only did I write it, I have to tell you it has helped me tremendously accomplish my goals. Wonderful. I can I can believe it. I know it's changed the way I think, too. Um, it, it's just been a lot of revelations as I'm reading and as I'm rereading. You know, this is the kind of book that you want to read more than once. Definitely. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about um, things like respect and how to be humble and stay humble. So definitely, folks, make sure that you watch every Monday before noon. We have a new episode uploaded. And if you have been seeing this one for the first time and you didn't watch our other series, please, by all means, go back and watch from series one because Anne-Marie's wisdom is just incredible and she's giving you this information there's no hidden costs. There's nothing to enroll in. She's just giving you this information because she wants to pay it forward. This is her way of paying it forward. 
Thank you so much, Anne Marie. My pleasure. Thank you, Carol Ann, and thank you for uh, viewing this video cast. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe, folks. I'll have all the information in the description to get a free copy of Anne Marie's book as well. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye, Anne Marie. Thank you, Carol Ann. Bye now. Thank you, Anne Marie.